Hi, in today's video I'd like to take a look at this um, plug-in power supply here. Now this power supply is one of those typical cheap ones and this came with a very cheap and dubious item from eBay. And so before I went and plugged it in I had a look inside to have a look at you know how it was built and whether it was safe. And if you have a look inside it actually is surprisingly well built. I mean you've got all the input filter components here, you've got a nice fuse, you have uh, common mode chokes, inrush current limiting and it's a proper switch mode circuit so it has a um, controller chip on the underside Come on. and you know proper isolation and everything. So I was really happy um, going forward with this power supply and using it but when I went to plug it in it didn't work and so I had a, I had a quick look around to see what might be going on and there is a really interesting failure mode with this power supply. So I thought we'd just have a look at it and see what we can make of it. So what happened when I plugged in the power supply was absolutely nothing. It was completely dead, it didn't make any buzzing noises or anything at all. So I took it apart and just to look to see you know, how far it actually works. Um, so after having had it plugged in I just measured um, the voltage across the main filter cap here. Um, if you're doing that obviously be aware that if it does work you could have you know 350 volts or something across it so be very careful handling those things after you just unplug them. But there was no voltage at all across the, the cap here. So I thought well maybe there's something wrong maybe one of the wires has come off but um, no. So what I did is I just sort of traced out the circuit up to the filter cap and it's actually really simple. Um, you've got one of the one of the incoming mains wires here going across here through the inrush current limiting NTC through a common mode choke to your bridge rectifier into the cap and the other line as well goes here through the fuse through the common mode choke um, and then again to the um, to the bridge rectifiers here and again to the cap um, so really what it is it's just use the multimeter and beep out all the connections so beeped out the fuse and everything and when I got to the common mode choke, it turns out that there is no continuity on either of the windings of the choke. And just to prove that I'm not completely mad, let's see what the continuity tester has to say about the choke. So that works. And for example, if we look at the um, fuse here, we get continuity, uh, the NTC also. And if you look at the common mode choke here, we get nothing. And interestingly the same on this side as well, so it's not just you know one of the wires has come off, um, the choke doesn't do anything. Is the choke in the wrong way? No, nope. no continuity here either. And nothing here, so that choke between here and there is completely open on both windings, which is really strange. And I did measure it on higher resistance modes as well, so it is completely open. And so what I would like to do is just um, desolder the choke and see what's going on, because as I said, if it's just one of the windings, I would have said, well, maybe there's a bad solder joint to one of the wires has come off. But for both of them to be faulty, um, it's really strange. So yeah, let's look at it a bit closer. And thanks to the surprisingly good build quality of this power supply, I actually have to get off this silicone as well after desoldering the choke because it's held in quite firmly by it. Alright, here we have the culprit and let's just convince ourselves that it's really the choke that's dodgy and not just the solder joints or anything. Let's see between here, nothing at all. And between here, also nothing at all. So I think we need to take a very close look and maybe take it apart to see why it's failing on both windings. So I'm not quite sure how well you can see it on camera, um, but the enameled wire here is cut just before it goes to the pin. It's all onto the pin and it looks like it's been cut here and the exact same thing on the same side of the other winding. Here you can see it comes out here and when it goes to the pin it's cut. And the other sides, this one and that one, they're fine. But 
Well, some of these sets have been cut, and I'm not sure if they've been cut or if they've been, you know, severed when they wound it too tightly, or maybe the stripping of the enamel when they were soldering it on, or, but something went on there, and it's really strange it happened on both sides, so um, whether that's a manufacturing defect or a saboteur in the in the choke factory, I don't know, but yeah, it's really cool um, that this kind of failure happens, because as I said, the rest of the power supply looks really well made, but um, clearly they didn't do any tests or any, well, even testing on the incoming component. So, um, yeah, really cool. Uh, not quite sure what I'm going to do because, as I said, the supply is really nice and I actually like to keep it, but maybe I just put some some wires in or, well, actually, they even left um, footprints here on the bottom for surface mount resistors to bridge out the choke, presumably for the even cheaper version, so I might just sold those in. Um, but yeah, that's a really interesting one. Um, never had that before. So I hope we, um, well, probably didn't learn anything today, but I hope it was at least entertaining for you. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and until next time.